Are you looking to increase your brain power, reduce your mental fatigue and your overall fatigue, and prevent aging, premature aging of your brain? Well, there's one lifestyle change you can make. It doesn't involve any expensive supplements or diet. It's just one lifestyle change you can make to do those things. Stay tuned to learn more. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer, and today we're talking about fasting and the brain. So I'm a functional medicine doctor, family medicine doctor, registered dietitian, and nutritionist, and I help motivated women and men reclaim their health, reclaim their vitality, and rediscover the magic of feeling well. And today we're talking about, about just that because we're talking about your brain. And that is one major way, one very important organ in our body, and um, one major contributor to fatigue or feeling well, feeling that vitality that we talk about on this channel. So I post videos every Thursday. If you haven't subscribed, I would love for you to subscribe. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're coming back, thanks so much for coming back. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button and share this if you feel like anybody else that in your life could benefit from learning more about improving their brain power. So as the title said, we're talking about fasting. And so first let's talk about what fasting is. There's a lot of buzz about fasting and then sometimes you'll hear it re referred to as time restricted eating. So it kind of means the same thing as far as your brain function goes, although you know the studies that have been done with fasting with humans tend to be more of um, a five to two kind of ratio where you're five days eating normally and then two days e eating 500 calories a piece. Whereas the animal studies, a lot of times they'll do every other day, like 24 hours on of, you know, access to food and then 24 hours of fasting. So there's all different ways the studies have been conducted, but um, a more common um, method that people are using is the time restricted eating where I've talked about this on my channel and I'll refer my video from last week where I talked about mitochondrial health. So time restricted eating is when let's say you're eating for eight hour window in the day and then um, you are fasting and not eating for 16 hours. There's 14 to 10 where you're not eating for 14 hours and you're eating for 10 hours or some people do less or more, some variant of that. So that's kind of the difference between fasting and time-restricted eating. So let's talk about what fasting does for our brain. So animals, obviously, in the wild, uh, follow fasting patterns all the time, and their brains are primarily functioning on ketones. So we're going to talk about ketones. We're going to talk about brain drive um, neurotropic factor, BDNF, and then just talk about some of the benefits on the brain of fasting. So first let's talk about that BDNF, brain drive neurotropic factor. So fasting and exercise. So any of these times today when I'm talking about fasting, you can get the same benefits from exercising. And when you combine cardiovascular exercise, that's running, walking, you know, getting that heart rate up, rowing, swimming, biking, anything that gets that heart rate up. Um, so if you really want the double whammy of really getting um, your BDNF up, getting your ketones up, you can combine some overnight fasting and the exercising, the cardiovascular exercise. So BDNF. So when we have more BDNF, then we can um, stop some neuronal neurons in our um, in our brain from dying. We can stop neuronal death. We can even potentially um, grow some new neurons. There's debate about that, but um, some of the studies are backing that up that we can potentially develop new nerve or neuron cell, new nerve cells, neurons um, in our brain from fasting and or exercise. Uh, also, it um, the BDNF increase helps with our memory, our learning, our recall, um, and makes our neurons more resistant to stress. We all need that. Um, so that's one way that BDNF can help and that BDNF comes from fasting. Another way that fasting can help is it can optimize neuroplasticity. And so neuroplasticity means our brains are more resilient, um, modify our connections and our synapses in our brain and help our brain adapt to our environments more easily. Yes, more easily. So, um, if you have better neuroplasticity, your brain is more adaptable, it's growing like with the BDNF, and it's more resilient to stress. Again, we all need that. Um, our brain, in studies, our brain performs better when fasting. Our learning, our memory, our alertness are all improved when fasting and or exercising, especially when combining the both, both of them. 
And we produce ketones when we're fasting. And one of the major ketones is BHB, beta-hydroxybutyrate. And we get more energy from BHB than we do from glucose. Our brain usually runs on glucose or sugar, it's known as. Um, so our brain gets more energy from BHB. We make more energy and we're, we're, we make more energy producing mitochondria. And again, I'll link my mitochondria video from last week because the mitochondria are the powerhouses of our cell. So the more mitochondria, healthy mitochondria we can develop, the better we function, the more better our energy is, the better our brain energy is, the better our, um, alertness. We can work more efficiently and effectively. So there's just a lot of benefits in our life from improving our mitochondria and from fasting. It also is known, fasting is also known to, um, in like rebalance our excitotoxicity in our brain. So we want a balance of the excitability of the brain. Basically we don't like glutamate can increase the excitability or excitotoxicity of the brain. Whereas GABA can kind of calm it down. So like you'll see GABA supplements on the market. Um, and that's why, because, uh, GABA is known to kind of calm down the brain. So with fasting, we can improve that GABA and then kind of calm down the brain. And then it will help the unhealthy neurons to or stop stop neurons from dying and kind of reduce our unhealthy neurons. Um, also, the ketones inhibit free radicals, and free radicals can cause so much damage not only in our brain but can contribute to cardiovascular disease, other disease of other organs. And we really want to reduce free radicals. That's why you hear a lot about antioxidants. Antioxidants, vitamins A, C, E can all fight free radicals, but so can ketones. Ketones um, make potent like antioxidant capabilities so they can fight free radicals. So that's why the ketogenic diet, I mean, people are losing weight on fasting and the ketogenic diet. So that's probably why it's more popular because people are actually seeing weight loss. But there's a benefit to the ketogenic diet combined with fast, intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating, I should call it. Either way, when you combine those two, you can fight those free radicals and overall improve um, organ health throughout the body, not just the brain. Um, fa fasting also lowers global brain inflammation. So the more we can lower inflammation in our brain and then lower inflammation throughout our bodies, the longer, long, the better longevity we have and we reduce our risk for chronic disease and we improve the function of our brains. Um, as I said before, fasting also increase, increases our mitochondria biogenesis. So just another added benefit to that. And with fasting, um, normally the brain uses so much glucose. And like we said, I said before, when it can switch to those ketones, we're using primarily the ketones for energy and it just improves our memory, our learning and our alertness. So just reiterating that. So as you can tell today, fasting is a great benefit to our brain if you want to do it through the uh, intermittent fasting where you can do like the five to two where you eat for five days and then two days out of the week back to back, you do 500 calories a day. Um, there's some, some plans that can even make this a little bit easier for you. Um, the Prolon diet um, is very popular and very scientific. And that's one way I've had clients use that and they have had great success with that. And also you can just try to do uh, fast for 24 hours once a week. Some people do that. Or you can do the time restricted eating. And that's sometimes an easier way to transition into. So you can start with like 10 hours of fasting, bump yourself up to 11, 12, try to get up to a goal of like 13 to 14 at least. And then the longer you go, the more of that benefit that you get. So that's the lowdown on brain, your brain while it's fasting. If you have any questions or comments, if you've tried fasting, please comment down below. Let me know how you felt. Now, I'm not your doctor, so please take this advice and discuss it with your healthcare provider because if you have diabetes and are on, on insulin in particular, you don't want to be doing this fasting, probably not at all, but 
Definitely not without the advice of your endocrinologist or your um, healthcare provider. So definitely take this information, discuss it with your healthcare provider, and make sure it is safe for you because it may not agree with some of your medications. And if you're combining fasting and exercise, you do want to make sure your blood sugar doesn't go too low. So you need to be very careful about that. Have a snack with you. Just make sure you discuss it with your healthcare provider and make sure your heart and your brain and your organs are safe to do that. So just you know, know that I can't, across the board, recommend this for everyone. If you have any questions, though, please comment down below. We're going to be doing a series on fasting and ketogenesis. And so you'll see more videos on this and your brain power and your energy levels. So I'd love if you stay tuned. If you keep coming back, hit the bell notification to be notified on Thursdays when I post new videos. I also have a PDF attached that will go more into the benefits of your uh, fasting and how to improve your mitochondria. And linked down below in the um, description, there'll be some products, supplements that I have used to help boost your ketogenesis. They're not easy ways to get out of following the ketogenic diet or to get out of fasting. You still have to put the work in, but these can help boost that. And they're ones that I feel really good on. I have clients that feel really good on this. So if you want to check that out, please do. You'll get a discount also. And then, um, oh, if you sign up for our newsletter, you get a discount because you can look at our, um, be part of our full script um, doctor branded, uh, vitamins and minerals and supplements. And then if you want to work with us in person or virtually check out the description down below, all my social media links are there. And I thank you for joining us today and we'll see you next Thursday.